Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, Gateway API Beyond GA. My name is Nick Young. Uh, I am a staff engineer at Isovalent uh, and a maintainer on Gateway API. Uh, and I've got some other fine folks here on the stage. Mattia? Yeah, hello. I'm Mattia Lavacca. I'm a software engineer working at Kong in the Kubernetes team. And I'm a Gateway API contributor. Hey, everyone. I'm Surya, and I'm an engineer working on the OpenShift networking team at Red Hat. I contribute to the Network Policy API project. Happy to be here at KubeCon today with all of you. Yeah, and I'm Lior. Uh, I'm SRE at Google, uh, specifically working on GCE, Google Compute Engine, so a little bit down the stack. And I'm also Ingress to Gateway Maintainer and Gateway BI Contributor. Yeah, it's there. <laughs> yeah, that's you there, man. Uh, okay, so let's get started. So. What we're going to do today is uh, we're going to run through some Gateway API updates. Uh, then these fine folks have got some uh, cool projects that we've been working on to tell you about. Uh, and then I'll round it out at the end. Okay? So let's get started. So uh, we are hard at work at V1.1. Uh, we released 1.0 uh, just over six months ago. Um, and this, this release, uh, we've been working on lots of quality of life and tooling improvements, uh, conformance profiles, which uh, Material and Surya are going to tell you about some user experience improvements, which Leo is going to tell you about. Uh, and the other one is a policy attachment update, which is me. Um, but we've also made a few changes to the GEP process. So uh, for those of you who don't know, GEPs are the gateway enhancement proposals. They are how the Gateway API uh, handles feature requests. We, uh, we have a process for this. Um, we have, uh, you know, it's reasonably complicated, uh, but <laughs> um, we have added a new uh, state memorandum. This is a bit more like a more traditional RFC. Um, our current GET process has us run through a series of stages that eventually ends up with the GET graduating to standard, which means that it is now ready to use and is fully implemented in the API. Um, the memorandum GET is a way to record uh, that the community has talked about something and we're now in agreement. And so that agreement is recorded. Um, also, get files now include some metadata so we can build some tooling around them. Um, and more importantly, uh, for those of you who have been watching closely, um, we've added a limitation on how many GEPs can be in experimental. Experimental is the phase before uh, standard, which is when we are prototyping the thing, uh, implementations have started implementing it, um, but we're not 100% sure if we've got everything right. So we currently have 17 gaps in experimental. Uh, we don't want to add any more until we start moving some through to standard. So we, got, so we can keep the sort of stability level of the API overall rising. You can do it. Okay. Okay. So we're hoping to have three gaps uh, transition to standard in V1.0, uh, uh, conformance profiles, gRPC route, and route port matching. Um, additionally, we've got the following gaps, changing levels. Uh, gateway kettle, um, that one's done already. That has moved to a memorandum state. Uh, we'll talk a bit more about that later. Uh, session persistence behavior, we're going to move that from the provisional state to implementable. That means that people, implementations will actually be able to start doing session, session uh, prototyping session persistence. Uh, and same for uh, client certificate verifications for gateway with listeners. That's, that is when you want to request your gateway, uh, requires a client certificate. From, uh, from the end user client. Uh, but yeah, please check out the get board for more info. That QR code is our publicly available get board that, that keeps track of uh, which uh, gaps are at which stage. Okay, let's uh, hit some specifics. Uh, this is gRPC route is, as I said, we're, we're gonna move this to standard as part of 1.1. Uh, this is an addition on top of HTTP route uh, the conf uh, that lets you route gRPC by, via method and a, and a few other gRPC specific things. Very handy for if you're doing a lot of gRPC. Uh, conformance tests emerge. We've got five implementations passing, conform, passing those tests. So it's ready to uh, graduate to standard. The only thing we've got left to do is to actually make the change to move the API from uh, v1 alpha 2 to v1. Uh, so yeah, it'll still be optional. Um, and so implementations don't have to support it. But if they do, there's a required behavior. Okay, route port matching. This, use, this allows you to use a route as an additional field for, a, for any other type of routes parent ref. So if you haven't used Gateway API before, um, routes, routes, whether they be HTTP routes, gRPC routes, TCP, UDP routes, they all attach to a gateway using a parent ref. Um, what we're saying here is that you can, use, you can put a port in the parent ref 
which will mean that that route will only attach to listeners in a gateway that match the same port. Okay, so you know, it's just an, another nice sort of convenience way to make sure that your config is not going anywhere you don't mean it to. Performance test PR is open. Two implementations already support it, uh, and it's, go it's going to uh, extend its support. One of the other things that we've started adding more recently is this idea of uh, feature names. That's going to be relevant later uh, in some of the stuff the others are going to talk about. Uh, this, uh, this one describes our gateway kettle. So we are building a tool, gateway kettle, which will be a command line tool that lets, or well, is a command line tool, that lets you uh, introspect gateway API resources and knows a lot more about the gateway API resource model than straight queue kettle. Um, and will therefore be able to tell you more about the resources and how they, and how they interrelate. Uh, you know, it knows about policy attachment, it knows about uh, the, how uh, routes attach to gateways and a bunch of other stuff like that. Really cool, great, uh, you know, great initiative. Gaurav is absolutely killing it here. Um, and so this one, the memoranda gap is merged um, and the, ne the next steps are just keep building and iterating on gateway kettle, which is already happening. So if you're interested in this, uh, this is a good place to get started with Gateway API con contribution. Uh, session persistence. This one has been going a long time. Uh, we had, it's been a pretty contentious one. We had one PR, I think, that got up to nearly 400 comments um, before it got merged. Uh, we've had a couple of other PRs with like multiple hundreds of comments, um, but it is in progress for moving to implementable. Um, we are going to do this. We're going to be adding a backend LB policy object, which is a po direct attached policy that attaches to a service. What that does is it directs implementations to say, this is how you route traffic to this service. And so what, and that lets you set things like session persistence behavior. And so that will be able to say, the session persistence behavior for this service is this, no matter where or what type of route it's attached to, okay? So uh, we are also gonna uh, add the ability to configure this inside route rules um, and but uh, that one is still coming. Uh, Grant Spence has been leading this one and has been amazing work. Like you said, when you get that much discussion, actually pulling people together and getting them into the same direction is really tough. And so Grant has been doing amazing work here. There's only one line left in the checklist before it can move to implementable, and that's to finish designing the uh, route rule API. So yeah, look out for this one uh, to move, hopefully to move to implementable uh, in the next few weeks. I think I, I forgot to actually say out loud for the recording that 1.1 uh, we're hoping to release very soon after KubeCon. Okay, uh, client certificate verification for gateways. As I said before, this is the ability to configure a, a gateway listener to require a client certificate for when, for when people connect to it. So if you're terminating TLS, this says, you know, you can't terminate TLS, you can't connect to this listener unless you have a client certificate that's also valid, uh, trusted by the same CA chain. Um, so proposal itself isn't controversial, but what we found in a classic computer science problem, uh, you know, we are struggling with naming. <laughs> uh, and so, you know, the, uh, we just want to, but we want to make sure that we get all of these namings right so that we can then make sure that we have consistent naming for all the TLS things across the whole API. Um, so that's delayed things a bit. This is mainly waiting on review of <laughs> bandwidth. Uh, that's me <laughs> and others. <laughs> um, okay. Okay, the big one, this is the big one I've been working on. It's one of the reasons I haven't had review bandwidth. Um, so policy attachment is a pattern uh, uh, that describes how you attach meta resources to other resources. Those meta resources change the behavior of the resources they attach to somehow. Um, the, this has been described for a long time in uh, GEP 713, uh, meta resources and policy attachment. Um, that GEP um, is being moved to a memorandum and all of the implementation details are split out into two specific GEPs with the two different types of policy attachment. GEP 2648 is direct policy attachment and GEP 2649 is inherited policy attachment. Direct policy attachment is much simpler, like by design. The whole point of that is that we want to get some usages of this pattern to standard as quickly as we can. Inherited is a way, way harder problem to solve. It's really hard with policy, with inherited policy that can flow across multiple objects to have a standard way for uh, for users to be able to know that their object has been affected by a policy. You know, if you think about it, if you're a user and someone else has put something on the gateway and you've got a route and there's cha config change that you don't know about, that is a really bad user experience. So yeah, we really, we really got a lot of work to do there. Um, it's happening, especially wanted to shout out the folks from Quadrant who are doing amazing work with the uh, policy. 
Um, and so, yeah, this is a really big PR, so the review is taking a while. Uh, I think I have changes outstanding that I haven't been able to get to because KubeCon. Um, but uh, this should hopefully uh, merge real soon too. Um, so, if you want more features, and who doesn't want more features in Gateway API? <laughs> um, we have currently have 34 gaps open, right, with plenty of requested features not yet covered by one. So, common features we hear about, cores, authentication, rate limiting, um, they all have gaps open. Um, and, but those ones are currently sort of waiting for someone to come and pick them up. So if you really want to see these things, like we are, like we being the maintainers and the other leadership, <laughs> we are fully committed with, with what we've got on our plate at the moment. So the more people want this, you know, this is open source, PRs welcomed, contributions gratefully accepted. Okay, so please follow the process though and start a discussion. Um, we've had a, you know, don't go and do a whole big PR because there's a good chance that you've missed something if you haven't sort of been involved in the conversations already, start a discussion, talk about what you would like to see, gather use cases, and then uh, hit the process. That is the GAP overview page that has the overview of the process with all of the, uh, all of the different states. I have specifically not addressed all the different states because we don't have that much time and I am running out of time. Uh, but yeah, please uh, use, the, uh, use the QR codes, have a look at those links, and uh, yeah, we would really love to see more movement on more GAPs, but we need more people. With that, I think, there we are. Over to you two. Thank you, Nick. Um, so he set a high bar for the rest of us. Um, but if you noticed, my personal profile is a little bit of a misfit for this talk compared to the other three profiles here, because I work for the Network Policy API project. That's where I spend a lot of time on, not the Gateway API. But I assure you that I'm here to talk about conformance profiles. And this profile is very much a fit, because this is one of those areas where both our communities have collaborated and worked together to solve a common pain point. So let's look into why we wanted to do conformance profiles in the first place, right? So we've had plenty of pain points in the past as API developers, API maintainers, in building a community, in staying in touch with the implementers and the end users. And we wanted to have a collaborative way to do this. Both these projects actually have core APIs, like the Network Policy API and the Ingress API, which are stable, have been around for a really long time. We have extensive list of implementations out there. And as the API maintainers, we probably don't even know the full list of implementations because we never really had a proper tracking mechanism to begin with. Without a tracking mechanism, there was also a lack of consistent feedback loop between the implementers of those APIs and the API designers and maintainers. And feedback is really important, especially in the alpha and beta stages, because that's when you can iteratively work on it and with the constructive feedback, make changes to the API before it stabilizes, because at that stage, it's pretty much done. It's pretty hard to make changes without breaking someone. So lack of feedback also means that, you know, we were unable to give conformance badges, acknowledge those implementations have done the hard work and become conformant to our APIs. So these were the three pain points, right? Like, so the fact that we didn't have a way to track implementations, we didn't have enough feedback coming up from them, and we didn't also have a way to acknowledge their conformance. So these three pain points were what we were trying to solve. And the Ingress API, which has been around for a long time, all of you probably know about it already, had a conformance workflow, but this became defunct because we couldn't get collaboration and enough implementations to make use of it. And it's somewhat the same with the similar to the Network Policy API because we have end-to-end -end tests running in the core Kubernetes KK repo, but it runs on a specific implementation which can lead to implementation bias. So in general, we were really having a hole, a missing gap where we probably didn't have a generic enough conformance test report framework, which can actually solve all these key problems for us. So that's where conformance profiles come in. It's pretty cool giving all the credit to the Gateway API folks right here because the Network Policy API project basically just adapted and then adopted this to our needs. So conformance tests, every API has a set of features, set of fields. We want to have an extensive set of tests that test this, right? Like this is pretty basic. So we have a generic test suite that you can just pull in and run your tests on. So if you are an implementation and if you are conformant to a feature, it probably means that you pass all the tests in this suite. Profiles is, in one word, just an abstraction layer on top. So a profile is just a way to group a set of conformance tests together. And as an implementer or an end user, you can subscribe or opt in into these profiles and just run it to see, oh, what implementations are, what are the implementations actually supporting, right? Like, what are the features that are being supported, what are the profiles that are being supported, and so on and so forth. Examples of profiles are HTTP, Mesh on the gateway side, 
Adbu Network Policy on the Network Policy API side, and Matia will talk more about in depth around what profiles are. Yeah. <clears throat> so the, the API basically defines multiple sets of features. There are the core and extended and implementation specific features. And both the core and extended features are tested by exhaustive conformance uh, suite test. So basically, each feature is uh, a collector of conformance tests, and each profile can be seen as a collector of features. Some features can be core, some others can be extended, and everything is about implementation support, right? So the level of support of, for an implementation. So an implementation can be core conformant with the Gateway API, uh, with a specific profile of a Gateway API, and this means that all the tests related to the core feature must be successfully run by the implementation itself. While the extended conformance for an implementation is related to a specific feature. So let's say that an implementation X wants to, be, wants to claim conformance with uh, an specific extended features. Well, that's me that means that all the conformance tests for that specific features are successfully run by that implementation. And the conformance test suite produces the conformance report. So the conformance report is basically the output of this process. Here is the first part of such a report. This is just a, a regular Kubernetes API. So there is some metadata. Then uh, in, uh, in the snippet, you can see there is some implementation details. So you can see the contact, uh, organization, project, basically basic information about the um, implementation. And as I said, the implementation is intended to run the conformance test suite. The conformance report is created by the suite. And the conformance report uh, has to be uploaded on the Gateway API GitHub repository by the implementation itself. And the Gateway API gives a conformance badge to the implementation. On the right, there is a, a screenshot of the folder structure that we have for the reports in the Gateway API repository. For example, there is the version 1, uh, 100 of the Gateway API. And as you can see, there is a bunch of implementations that uh, provided their conformance reports for such a version. So basically, we can see that um, the conformance reports are broken, by, uh, broken down by uh, version Gateway API version and implementation version. Here is the second part of the conformance report, and it's the important one. Uh, it, th th this is about profiles. And the profiles is just a slice of many different profiles. For example, here we have only one profile uh, named HTTP, which is about HTTP features. And the main part of this profile is the core. So the core, as I said before, is related to core features. So for example, um, in these regards, this implementation is successfully running all the 29 conformance tests related to the HTTP uh, core features. On the right, there is another tool that is very important for the user who wants to pick a specific Gateway API implementation because everything is about the level of support. So I, I as a user, want to select the Gateway API that is best for me. So um, here is an example related to the Kong Ingress controller. Uh, the Kong Ingress controller for Gateway API version one uh, has submitted two different reports for two different versions. There is a table of contents in the readme, nothing very interesting, just a, uh, some pointers to, uh, to reach easily the reports. And there is the to reproduce section. The reproduce section is very important because as I said, and the implementation has to upload the conformance report and to enforce some trust between the implementation and the Gateway API community, the implementation itself has to uh, fill in this section with the details on how to reproduce the same conformance report. So you as a user can just go to this page and run the same steps needed to um, create the SAM conformance report uploaded by implementation. So like Mattia mentioned, we also adopted the same conformance report CRD to the gate in network policy API project. And this is how it looks like on our side, right? Like where it's basically the similar thing. We have our own profiles. And whenever we have new implementations, we encourage them to do this, you know, run our conformance tests and then upload their report into our repository, which is the network policy API one. 
But the key takeaway, and I think what I really like about this feature is the fact that there's a lot of collaboration here, right? Like where we encourage implementers also to open PRs and you know, contribute to the community. And it's not just a bunch of us doing APIs on our own. So that I think is like uh, really valuable for us here. So what's in it for an implementer? Like we said, how do you leverage this framework that we have here for you? So that's where you can use, there are two methods in which the implementers can make use of this framework. One of them is using the Golang library, which you can just import and then have this Golang struct that you see here on the screen, where you can put in your implementation details, what version of your plugin, and what profiles do you want to opt in? That's the most important part, because you might be supporting some of them, not supporting the others. So put all that information in, just run the suit, and it generates the report for you, which you can then upload. And Matthias will talk about the second half of this. Yeah, so let's say that you are an implementation, you don't want to use the uh, Go library because for whatever reason, maybe your project isn't written in Go. And so the Get API provides a CLI as well. A CLI is just a wrapper around the uh, conformance test machinery and everything can be easily configured by just setting the proper uh, command line flags. So there is also this possibility. And this is the second part of the conformance report that I uh, started talking about before, and this is the extended section. Here is the differentiator between the implementations, because an implementation can pick and implement specific extended features. And here is the place where you, you can discover which features are supported by which implementation. So this is a very useful tool for a user to understand which is the best implementation that fits their needs. Likewise, right? So I'm not going to repeat what Matthias said, but what I want to highlight here is how similar the reports are looking, right? Like for the extended tests. So you can know which CNI you want to pick for your policy API implementation because you know exactly what that CNI is supporting, what it's not supporting, right? And from that, you can, as an end user, benefit a lot. And what's in it for the community, right? So for the API maintainers, this is really important because they know exactly what their implementations are supporting and what features are being used, what features are not being used. And that means we can maybe decide to drop some of them before they graduate to the standard channel, right? Because we just don't have enough implementations. So this framework of profiles and testing has become an important way to give that signal back to the API maintainers. And the other aspect is you saw how similar both the frameworks were for both these projects, which means we just duplicated it. But we could, in fact, just have a common library and put it all out there, right? So generic, thinking bigger here, it could be beneficial to anybody doing CRDs and APIs out there. So we encourage you to reach out to us if you have a use case where you're adding APIs and you're stuck on, oh, now I need to do the testing. How do I do it? You can just work with us and we can do an, a new library project, which is generic enough, and everybody can just adopt it you know, according to your needs. So yeah, what's next? First point most likely what Surya just talked about. So uh, make this project as common library that any project in the Kubernetes landscape may use. Second one is uh, improvements on the UI UX level. So we would like to have a mechanism to automatically uh, parse all the conformance reports uploaded by the implementations and fill in a support matrix. So a user can have a quick grasp on the implementation and the supported features to choose the, the best for them. There is also an ongoing effort on this, and yeah, we see. The third one is automation. Everything is manual today, and many steps could be automated somehow, and yeah, there is, this is also something that we would like to improve on the conformance test suite. And the last one is improvements on the conformance pages. Uh, at the beginning, I say that um, conformance badge is given by the implementation, by the Get API to the implementation when the implementation provides a new conformance report. And yeah, we could do something better uh, in regards to this. So this is something that we would like to, to work on. Right. So I'm going to talk about the user experience sides or the user experience efforts plus the GA released last October. So two main focus areas I'm going to talk about. One is the migration experience. So everything in regards to um, the user experience in the migration process from Ingress and other APIs to Gateway. And the other one is discoverability. So on the migration side, we have Ingress to Gateway. Ingress to Gateway is essentially your body to kick off the migration process. It's a simple CLI tool to just read Ingress and implementation specific configuration from a cluster of file and output corresponding Gateway API resources. Um, and just a note about the name, 
Um, it's called ingress to gateway, but it doesn't necessarily mean ingress API only to gateway. So it's, it's basically suggest ingress configuration. So it also supports CRDs and custom resources. And that leads me to the second bullet, or the third one, which is, is extensible. Um, every implementation can add their support to the tool, um, and it's relatively easy. So if anyone in the crowd is like an implementer, um, I encourage you to add, it, add the support, um, and we're getting constant uh, feature requests from users that it will be useful for them. And here are a few implementations that already supports the tool. So we have Istio, Ingress, Ingress Nginx, Kong, and Apache API 6. Now, our second focus area is discoverability. And within it, I want to start by talking about supported features again. Um, so we're essentially adding a new supported feature field to the gateway class status um, to improve the discoverability and accessibility for, supported, for the features the implementation support within the cluster. Um, so as you can see here, uh, we also have semantics for those features. So for example, this, this implementation uh, published, it supports HTTP route. So HTTP route means I support all core features of HTTP route. And they can optionally also uh, publish uh, extended and implementation specific feature that supports by just providing the full name. But we have uh, detailed semantics in GAP 2162 if you're interested. Um, and this GAP, by the way, is already experimental for a while. And I think we have like two or three uh, implementations that already supports it. Um, so we're planning, we're, we're still in a soak time right now of like six months, right? So we're waiting to, to graduate it soon. And essentially, this elaborates on the conformance reports uh, by providing direct and machine readable access to read those features from within the cluster. It also serves as um, the foundation for automation to warn when unsupported features are used. And it clearly defines um, which conformance tests are applicable to run, right? So the conformance tests that Surya and Matia were just talking about, um, they need to know what tests they want to run. So the plan is that each implementation that claims to support a set of features will pair those features from the gateway class um, and find the corresponding conformance tests they need to run and later use the results to report um, in the conformance reports uh, page. Um, now, the second focus uh, point in discoverability is related resources. Uh, we are also looking to improve the discoverability of related resources to the implementation in the cluster. Um, and this includes any CRD that the implementation cares about, including policies that Nick talked about earlier. Um, and to better present the motivation, uh, I want to present it in a form of two questions. As a user, how do I find what policies and extension filters I care about? And additionally, how do I discover other implementation-related resources? So it can be like uh, uh, parameters ref, I don't remember, like in the gateway class. Um, so, right. And as gateway API author, um, how and where should we put all this information? So the plan is to add another uh, field to the gateway class status, uh, something like resource repository or related resources. And again, we're debating about a name. But this essentially will include every uh, resource that the implementation cared about. And, if, and as a user, that I might care about when I'm debugging or looking to solve any gateway API related issues. Um, and by doing this, we essentially make get with class a one-stop shop for discovering implementation related information. Lastly, I want to talk uh, a few bullets about Gateway Cuddle. Um, Gateway Cuddle, as also Nick pointed out earlier, as the name suggested, a tailored command, li tailored command line tool uh, to interact with Get API resources. And the main motivation behind it is to empower users to comprehend the resource relationship in the cluster. So the API is very, very modular, right? We have gateways, we have HTTP routes, um, and the HTTP routes are attached to gateways. We have policies. Uh, policies can target gateways, can target routes. We have extensions, so it's pretty, pretty hard to comprehend what happens in the cluster and to comprehend those relationships. And more importantly, to comprehend how the relationships affect the traffic flow or the request flow in the cluster. So we want to make gateway deployments easier to configure, easier to troubleshoot, and easier to optimize for. Now, why not kubectl? Because kubectl support wasn't enough for us. Um, and mainly limitations are complex JSON path lookups and um, cross-resource lookups. Lastly, if you want to get involved, there is this gap um, 2722, which Gore from Google is leading, and it outlines the plan and a lot of um, other opportunities to get involved. So you can just scan it now, and I'll 
over to Nick to conclude. Oh, yeah, I guess. Yes, that's what I need. Thanks, mate. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, I just wanted to uh, take a couple of minutes to uh, let you all sort of see you know, who is the sort of leadership of Gateway API. I mean, obviously, an important part of uh, Gateway API is everyone here who uh, is it users or is interested in the API. But in sort of a more concrete way, <laughs> um, these folks here are, uh, you know, responsible for making Gateway API actually happen. So there's the three maintainers, um, me, Shane, and uh, Rob. Um, we have two GEP reviewers, Candice and Grant. Um, we have met leads for the Gamma Initiative, uh, John, Keith, and Flynn. Uh, we've got conformance approvers, Matia is one of them, uh, and uh, Arko and Sanjay, and then uh, conformance reviewers, Leo, Michael, and uh, Sunzuo, and uh, Gaurav is uh, currently in charge of Gateway Kettle. So yeah, just wanted to be, do a really big uh, shout out and thank you to everyone involved here. Thank you very much. <laughs> being, uh, being leadership in open source can be hard work, but uh, you know, getting, getting a bit of applause can uh, really help out. So thank you. Um, so if you would like to get involved, uh, you know, there's tons of opportunities. Like I said, heaps of gaps need work. Um, we've got, uh, you know, Ingress to Gateway needs help. Gateway Kettle needs help. We've got, you know, a million docs updates need to be done. Uh, you know, there's lots of other stuff. Um, and so please come and uh, check out to the uh, website there, gatewayapi.sigs.kates.io. Um, that has a community page that lists the meetings and all the other channels that you can get involved. But the big ones are SIG Network, Gateway API, and Kubernetes Slack, and of course, the repo itself. Uh, so with that, thanks, and uh, if anyone has some questions, we have a few minutes, uh, so please feel free, there's a microphone just here to uh, run up and grab the mic, otherwise uh, feel free to catch any of us uh, around. Thank you very much, everybody. Yeah, sorry, man. You... Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks very much for the update. Um, unlike the last couple of updates, I noticed there was a conspicuous absence of anything about gamma. Is that because it's not a priority at the moment, or I'm just reading too much into it? Uh, so there was actually another talk uh, at QCon by the gamma leads about what's going on with gamma. Okay. So yeah, we didn't want to duplicate the content. Gamma is so just to be 100% clear for the recording, uh, gamma is absolutely still happening. Um, it, it is still moving forward. The gamma leads are pushing things forward there, and that is definitely still going to be and is a thing. So Great. Sorry, thanks. Yeah, no worries. Great. Hello. Hey. Thank you for your talk. Uh, I'm just wondering when the CLI will be available or is it uh, testable right now? There which is. One? A, there is which can, one, though? The, the Gateway Kettle? Can, or a, yeah. Yes, it's a good way. Uh, so Gateway Kettle? Yes. So Gateway Kettle is available to download from the repo and compile yourself right now. Okay. Uh, we don't have a formal release process yet. That's one of the to-dos lists items. But uh, yeah, so you can download and use it today. Okay, thank you. No problems. Okay, look, like that's the end of our questions. Thanks, everyone. Oh, no, what, one more? Sorry. Uh, it's not a question, just a bit of feedback. Yeah. So you mentioned session persistence. Yes. And put me completely on the wrong foot because I, from an application perspective, it's more about persisting your session, like an HTTP session. Um, so, okay, yeah, so yeah, so this, that, that's what this is about. It's about routing, routing your uh, traffic to the correct back end. Yeah, so, so you, like session affinity, you mean? Oh, uh, so. No, uh, like, uh, but, but, uh, there is another talk about session persistence and session affinity. Yeah. So they are related, but slightly distinct concepts. Yeah. This is one of the things that we had 400 comments on, a, <laughs> on the PR yeah. about. But just to be uh, sure, so if you say persistent, you don't mean to literally save it to, let's say, disk. No, 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 no. We mean, we mean using the same, yeah, cookie. routing the same, yeah. Right, the cookie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. S stickiness is a better yeah, way to say right. it. Right. Yeah. My question or my feedback would be, I think lots of people would be put on the wrong foot like I was. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Great feedback. Yeah. Get into the repo, your feedback. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll remember, but uh, yeah, if you. Uh, I know naming is, what was it? The second thing hardest to do. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, everyone always says, right, there's two hard problems in computer science. Naming things, cache invalidation, and off by one errors. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, it's been great.